You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hey there, pet parents and dog lovers. Welcome to the Doggy Dish on Pet Life Radio. I am your host, Christy Vaughn, owner of Positively Wholesome All Natural Dog Treats. Thank you for joining us. Today's show is extra exciting because it's our first one. I thought it would be a great time for us to discuss some do's and don'ts when it comes to feeding healthy, human grade foods. What is safe and what should you stay away from? We'll get you up to speed and be right back after these messages. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. Dyson. The new Dyson Animal Vacs are powerful, bagless, upright vacuums for homes with pets. Air muscle and radial root cyclone technology generates the strongest suction power to powerfully remove dust, dirt, and pet hair from the home or car. To order your Dyson Animal Vac, go to DysonDeals.com. DysonDeals.com to order your Dyson Animal Vac today. Dyson. Music to your ears. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to The Doggy Dish on Pet Life Radio. Today's show is all about the do's and don'ts of healthy foods for the furry kids in your life. What is safe? And what should you stay away from? Now, we all feed our dogs regular old dog food, right? And if you've checked store-bought dog food, you may have noticed some interesting ingredients. Perhaps some ingredients you can't pronounce? Well, my rule of thumb is, if I can't pronounce it, I don't want to eat it, and I don't want to feed it to my dog either. Now, packaged dog foods and treats are very similar to packaged and pre-made people food. Oftentimes, they contain ingredients that aren't so safe. So if you're anything like me... My dogs are my kids, and I want to keep them happy and healthy. So I started on a mission to find nutritious whole foods that I could give to my dogs as treats and avoid the chemicals and preservatives and all of those unknown ingredients. Now, there are so many dog treat options to choose from when you go to the pet store that sometimes we forget about the importance of simple and healthy foods. It doesn't have to take a lot of time to cook healthy treats for your dog. So what I share on this show is quick and easy and most importantly, healthy. Because seriously, who has the time to spend in the kitchen? Before we begin, I want to offer a disclaimer. Please be sure to check with your vet before introducing any new foods to your furry kids. Dogs have special health concerns and allergies just like us. So we always want to double check with their health provider before trying anything new. Okay, with that said, let's first talk about the do's. What people food is safe to give to Fido? The first one is peanut butter. And I'm pretty sure I can't even say those two words in my house without my dogs going crazy. They love peanut butter. And anytime I'm baking yummy treats made with peanut butter, they are right there at my feet with drool hanging out of their mouths. Who am I kidding? They're always at my feet when I'm cooking or baking, even if it's not for them. They always think it is for them. So think about all of the things you can do with peanut butter. You can bake delicious treats with peanut butter in them, and you can also add peanut butter as an icing to the top of dog-friendly cookies or cakes. Now, my favorite is plain, non-fat yogurt and peanut butter whipped together. And I have to admit, I tried it before giving it to my dogs, and it was pretty delicious. This might be a good time for me to add that everything I talk about on this show is safe for human consumption. I am a big believer in being able to share snacks with your furry kids. So go ahead and give it a try. Now, I also have to mention that just like humans, some dogs have pretty severe peanut allergies. Actually, one of my Frenchie clients, her name is Snow, is allergic to peanuts. But she's able to stay happy and healthy by enjoying my dehydrated sweet potato and apple chips. So just know that it isn't the end of the world if your pup has allergies. And if you think your dog may have a peanut allergy, please make sure you talk to your vet. All right, the next item on the do list is cooked lean meats. Now, dogs are omnivores. 
which means they require both meat and veggies in their diet. Lean meats like chicken, beef, and pork with no visible fat and no added sauces or seasonings can be a great training treat. Add a bit of good quality extra protein to your dog's diet. Lean meat is an excellent balanced source of amino acids, and it's also a great source of B vitamins. These vitamins give your dog the energy he needs to be happy and healthy. And that's the goal, right? The next do is the sweet potato. And we all know that sweet potatoes are healthy for humans. They contain vitamin B6, vitamin C, and beta carotene. They're also a great source of fiber. And what's nice about sweet potatoes is they're safe for diabetic dogs because they contain manganese, which is a trace mineral, and it's also a pivotal component in the metabolism of carbohydrates. So dog treats really don't get any healthier than just a plain old sweet potato, either fresh or as a dehydrated treat. The next one on my list is carrots. Yes, carrots are healthy for dogs and they love them. Seriously, they do love them. I know it's, it's hard to believe, but carrots are excellent for dogs' teeth. They're low calorie and high in fiber and beta carotene and vitamin A. Now, I suggest giving dogs those little baby carrots, but if you have a small dog, you may prefer to break them up. Or if your dog is like my 50-pound boxer mix, they may prefer the baby carrots. So we know carrots are good for our pups, but what about another popular veggie? Green beans. Yep, cooked green beans are a great treat. They can be given individually as treats as you're training, or they can be added to your dog's food. With any veggie, just be sure you're giving fresh, not canned. Canned vegetables contain a lot of salt, which we'll discuss when we get to the don't list. So what's next on the list? Did you guess broccoli? I bet you weren't expecting me to say broccoli. I know it seems like a really odd choice, but broccoli is healthy and dogs actually love it. Now be careful though, broccoli should be given to your dog in moderation, just like any other human food. Their digestive systems are a bit different than ours, so sometimes it takes them longer to break down food. My dogs really like broccoli as a dehydrated treat, but you can also give them a little bit of raw broccoli in moderation, and also consider taking some cooked broccoli and putting it on top of their food. Now, since it's almost summer and you're about to dust off the grill, consider cooking up some zucchini and other squashes to give to Fido. Zucchini's potassium, folate, and vitamin content make it super healthy for you and your pup. And the good news is no part of the vegetable is toxic. Now, the next on our list is pumpkin. It sounds a bit strange, but pumpkin is actually good for both diarrhea and constipation the plain kind without any spices in it, is loaded with fiber and beta carotene. Be careful though, you don't want to give too much pumpkin as too much can be toxic to dogs. But a couple of teaspoons a day for little guys or a couple of tablespoons for larger dogs is actually very healthy and it's excellent for their digestive systems. Next, we're going to discuss a couple of fruits your dog can enjoy. We talked about veggies, so now it's fruits. First of all, apples seem to be an all-time favorite around here. There's nothing better than sharing an apple with your dog, if they're willing to share, of course. There's a lot you can do with apples. You can slice them and then freeze them for a tasty frozen treat in the warmer months. You can wedge a little slice into their favorite treat dispensing toy. You can make apple pops with applesauce or serve grated as a dinner topping. My dog's favorite apple treat has to be the dehydrated treat. They are crunchy and naturally sweet. But of course, be careful with dehydrated apples. They contain all of the nutrients of the hydrated ones, but since they are dried, they don't contain any water. So only feed little bits of dried apple to prevent tummy upset. Another fruit that is healthy is a pear. This is a good time to mention the one caveat with feeding fruits to dogs. If the fruit has a core and or seeds, you do not want to feed those to your dog. The core and seeds can be toxic to their tummies, so be sure to slice the fruit up and throw away the core and seeds. Now, while we're on the topic of fruit, go ahead and whip up a fruit salad for your pup. Strawberries, blueberries, cantaloupe, watermelon, and bananas are all great choices for a dog-friendly fruit salad. Strawberries and blueberries are naturally sweet and dogs love them. 
My two furry kids love their frozen blueberries, and they actually expect them every morning as a post-breakfast snack. They stand in the kitchen and wait by the freezer until it's time. Sometimes I think they have me trained. So go ahead and offer these fruits as snacks or training treats. But remember, not all fruits are safe, but we'll get to that later. I bet you didn't think it was that easy to feed your dogs fruits and veggies, huh? It's probably a lot easier than fooling your kids into eating them. Now that I've mentioned some of the healthiest foods you can give your dog, I'd like to share a very simple recipe with you that you can whip up today without much hassle. This yummy cookie recipe is a favorite in our house, and it includes one cup pumpkin puree, which you can find at your local grocer or health food store, two eggs or a quarter cup egg whites, one half cup rolled oats, and now this is optional if your dog is on a grain-free diet, two cups whole wheat flour, brown rice flour, or gluten-free flour, and we'll get to the flours later, and three tablespoons all-natural peanut butter. Now, once you have your ingredients gathered, you'll want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. In a small bowl, you're going to stir together the flour, the oats, if you're using them, and then in a separate bowl, you're going to want to whisk together the eggs or egg whites, the pumpkin puree, and the peanut butter until it's all combined. Now stir together the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. You'll probably need to get your hands in there to form a nice big ball of dough. So you might get a little messy with it. If you have a baking mat, you'll want to pull that out. I cannot live without mine. But if you don't have one, it's okay. A floured surface of any kind will work. Now place the dough on the floured surface and roll it out with a rolling pin until it's about a half inch thick. Now comes the fun part. Feel free to get creative with your cookies. Cut out the cookies using a cookie cutter of any shape. Now for dogs, of course, bones and paw shapes are especially fun. Just remember to flour everything you use, including the rolling pin, the cookie cutter, and your hands, as the dough will be pretty sticky. Place the cookies on a non-stick cookie sheet and then bake for 30 minutes. Take them out of the oven, place them onto a cooling rack, and let them cool thoroughly. They will start to harden as they cool. And voila, your pup has delicious and healthy cookies to enjoy, and it didn't require that much effort on your part. Now a tip, these cookies don't contain any preservatives. You'll want to be sure and store them in a sealed container in the fridge. They will last for about 10 days if kept in the refrigerator. They also freeze and thaw very nicely if you'd like to make a bigger batch for later. I'll post this recipe on my Facebook page so you can print it out and follow along. Now that I mentioned different types of flours you can use, if you're thinking about baking treats, chances are you'll need to make a decision about what flour to use. I like to use whole wheat flour for most of my treats. However, if I do get a request for a custom treat for a dog with severe allergies, I will use a grain-free flour. There are several types of grain-free flours you can choose from but my favorite is coconut flour. Just know that it is pretty dense, so you will need to adjust the recipe accordingly. Another grain-free flour is garbanzo bean flour. Yep, it's made from garbanzo beans, or you might know them as chickpeas, and it works perfectly with any recipe. So deciding which flour to use doesn't have to be tricky. Just know your dog and his or her needs, and it will be an easy decision to make. Speaking of dogs with allergies, I'd like to share a sweet story about my girl Tallulah. Tallulah's mom came to me with a special request. Her sweet girl suffers from severe allergies to wheat and cannot eat any store-bought treats. She asked me if I could make a grain-free treat for her to try. I was able to make a custom treat using coconut flour, and guess what? Tallulah loved it, and she didn't have any allergic reactions to it. Her mom was so happy and relieved that she could finally give her sweet girl a yummy and healthy treat. So that concludes the first part of our show. We talked about some healthy foods that you do want to give your dog, and I shared a tasty and nutritious dog-friendly cookie recipe with you. I'll be sure to post the recipe on the Doggy Dish Facebook page so you can follow along when you're ready. We'll continue with our don't list after these messages from our sponsors. You won't want to miss this. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Every pet is unique. 
Maybe they're gray in the muzzle, yet young at heart. Maybe they're growing out of the puppy stage and into their paws and ears. Or maybe they're just trying to maintain a more girlish figure. At PetSmart, we have the right food for your pet at a great value for you. PetSmart. Be better together. Go to PetSmartDeal.com and save up to 30% on possum gifts for the pets and pet people in your life. Toys, collars, leashes, PetSmart gift cards, treats, and more. Go to PetSmartDeal.com today. P-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-D-E-A-L.com. Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, this is the place for a special paparazzi treat. Only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back to The Doggy Dish. I am Christy Vaughn, and we are discussing the do's and don'ts of feeding your furry kids healthy and nutritious treats to avoid those yucky chemicals and preservatives often found in store-bought and bagged treats. We just discussed foods that are do's or safe for your dog to eat. Just to recap, we have peanut butter, which you can do so much with, including baking with it or using it as a topping on cakes and cookies. Talked about lean meats like chicken, beef, and pork without any visible fat that can be given as added protein to their existing diet. Sweet potatoes, we learned, are basically the perfect food. They can be made into treats or given fresh with the skins removed. Carrots, green beans, broccoli, zucchini are all wonderful veggies to use when baking or just as a special treat throughout the day. If you have a little guy, you will want to break up veggies before giving as a treat. Pumpkin is also wonderful because it's both good for constipation and diarrhea. So if you have a pup with an upset tummy, reach for the pumpkin and add a little to their food. Next is the dog-friendly fruit salad. Remember, not all fruits are safe, especially ones with cores and seeds. But apples, pears, strawberries, blueberries, cantaloupe, watermelon, and bananas are perfectly fine. I also discuss types of flowers you can use when baking yummy treats. If you have a dog who suffers from allergies, you may consider baking their treats using a grain-free flour like coconut flour or garbanzo bean flour. Be sure to check out our Facebook page for recipes. Now, let's talk about the don'ts. This is really important to know so you don't end up with a sick pup. We all know there is nothing worse than a sick dog. Of course, if your dog shows any signs that are unusual, you'll want to contact your vet immediately. Discussing the don'ts is especially important so you know the benefits of making your own treats. Ingredients like corn syrup are often used to help sweeten dog treats. Too much sugar over time will lead to weight gain, diabetes, hyperactivity, and even a change in their mental behavior, which is so scary. Corn, a very inexpensive filler often used in dog food and treats, over time may develop mold or fungus and in turn may result in death. Oftentimes, the ingredients you can't pronounce are synthetic preservatives to extend the shelf life of store-bought treats. These preservatives can be toxic to your beloved pup, so keep that in mind. Now let's talk about foods that are probably already in your pantry and refrigerator that are not safe for Fido. Our first don't is probably one that you already know, chocolate. Why is chocolate not safe for dogs? Well, first of all, chocolate can cause seizures, coma, and death. Baker's chocolate is the most dangerous because it is very concentrated. 
A dog can consume milk chocolate and appear to be fine because it is not as concentrated, but it is still dangerous. The darker it is, the more dangerous it is. So for all of you chocolate lovers out there, I'm raising my hand. You just can't see. Be careful and make sure you never leave a chocolate bar within reach of little or big paws. Be extra careful if you have a counter surfer like my Sadie. She will try and get her paws on anything left on the counter. The next don't is actually two items, grapes and raisins. You would think since most fruits are okay, grapes would be two, right? Wrong. Grapes and raisins can cause kidney failure in dogs. Just a little serving can actually be fatal. Be sure to leave the grapes out when you're making that fresh fruit salad for your pup. The next one on the list is coffee or any drink containing caffeine. Drinks and foods containing caffeine cause many of the same symptoms chocolate causes. If Fido likes to sneak a little bit of your latte in the morning, you may need to place your coffee cup out of paw's reach. Some dogs are very interested in the smell of coffee, and if they do happen to taste it, they normally love it if you use cream and sugar. So be careful and guard your cup. Onions are next on the don't list. You would think onions would be harmless, but if your dog ingests onions, it can cause anemia, as onions destroy red blood cells and can cause anemia in dogs. The same goes for garlic, scallions, and shallots. So be sure not to feed any of these to your pup. If you like to cook with onions and garlic, like I do, be careful when you're chopping. Like I said earlier, my pups are always at my feet, especially when I'm cooking, and they love to watch the floor like hawks. Who loves guacamole like I do? Who makes their own guacamole? Well, if you're a guac fan, be sure to keep that away from Fido. A substance found in avocados called persin is toxic to dogs. You may think it's harmless to share a little during Mexican night at your home, but remember, they should keep their paws away from the guac. Next, we're going to talk about eggs. Don't worry, cooked eggs are fine. However, raw eggs are not, and they make it on our don't list. An enzyme present in raw eggs interferes with the absorption of a particular vitamin in dogs, which can cause skin or coat problems down the road. Raw foods also pose a risk of salmonella, just like in humans. Cooked eggs are perfectly fine and loaded with protein. I like to hard boil eggs and then chop them up, once they're cooled, into my dog's food. You can also give them as is, as a little treat. Now, I just realized that was a bonus do wrapped up in a don't. What about nuts? We know from earlier in the show that peanut butter is a great treat for dogs. But what about different types of nuts? The first nut to stay away from is the macadamia nut. There's an unknown toxin in macadamia nuts that can be fatal to dogs. As few as six can cause symptoms such as vomiting, stiffness, and weakness. So definitely stay away from those. Another nut that can be dangerous is the almond. Now, if your dog gets into your almonds, there's no need to panic. Almonds can be difficult for them to digest, so their tummies may be a little bit upset, but nothing too serious. Walnuts are another nut to stay away from. They can be toxic to dogs and cause bowel obstructions. You should also avoid giving your dog cashews. They aren't necessarily dangerous, but they are high in fat. The same goes for Brazil nuts. Those are the large ones that I always pick out of the trail mix because I don't like them. They are also very high in fat and should not be given to dogs. This next don't seems like a no-brainer, but I do want to mention it. Alcohol, wine, and foods containing alcohol, none of them are good for dogs. Alcohol actually has the same effect on a dog's liver and brain that it has on humans. However, it takes much less to have severe effects. Just a little alcohol can cause vomiting, diarrhea, depression, problems with coordination, difficulty breathing, coma, and even death. So be sure to lock up your liquor cabinets, folks. Another don't on our list of food items is salt and sugar. Just like humans should limit their intake of salt and sugar, so should our dogs. Oftentimes, salt is used as a preservative in dog treats. Too much salt can be damaging to a dog's kidneys and also cause excessive thirst. If you're cooking your own dog treats or buying all-natural and healthy treats, be sure they don't contain salt or sugar. So that brings me to my last don't, which happens to be table food. If you've been opting for slipping scraps to Fido instead of wasting leftovers, you might want to rethink that. 
Like I mentioned before, dogs' digestive systems are very different than ours. If you've been eating any of the items on the doggy don't list, you may be slipping those into your dog's diet as well. I know those big brown eyes are so hard to resist, but you have to tell them it's for their own good. Plus, no one likes to encourage begging behavior at the dinner table, right? Let's recap the five do's and the five don'ts we discussed. On our list, we have peanut butter, lean meats, sweet potatoes, carrots, green beans, broccoli, zucchini, pumpkin, pears, strawberries, blueberries, cantaloupe, watermelon, and bananas. So remember, that makes up your dog-friendly fruit salad. And on our don'ts list, we have chocolate, grapes and raisins, coffee and any food or drink with caffeine in it, onions, avocado, raw eggs, macadamia nuts, alcohol, and salt and sugar. Whew, I know this seems like a lot of information, and it may be difficult to remember. But when in doubt, safe, simple, and healthy foods are best to supplement your dog's diet. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, please be sure to check with your vet before introducing any new foods to your furry kids. Dogs have special health concerns and allergies just like us. So we always want to double check with their health provider before trying anything new. There are a lot of healthy options for dogs with allergies. If you are thinking about making a special treat for your pup who suffers from allergies, I'd love for you to contact me. We may even feature your story on the show. Well, we are out of time and we would like to thank our producers for making this show possible. I love to hear from my listeners. So please send your comments and questions to Christy at PetLifeRadio.com. And that's Christy with an I. You can also find The Doggy Dish on Facebook and Twitter. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter to keep up with the latest and greatest in healthy cooking for your furry kids. Thank you for listening to The Doggy Dish. Bye-bye for now. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.